Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. If this is your first time here, then you are genuinely a little bit late to this particular party. This is video number 647, but welcome nonetheless. If you are a regular, then I'm sure you are well aware that Casio watches feature prominently on Just One More Watch. This is a value-focused channel after all, and I think Casio watches offer outstanding value for money, particularly if you are on a super tight budget and you want something that is gonna do everything Everything you could ask of it reliably for years and years. I think the brand should be at the very top of your shopping list. As a consequence, I must have featured about 50 or 60 different Casios on the channel over the last few years. And yet there is one model that can be found for less than $20 that is feature packed. It's got 100 meters of water resistance. It's a great size. It's got fantastic backlighting, timer, stopwatch, world time, all the usual good stuff. And yet I have completely, willfully snubbed it, ignored it, rejected it, call it what you will. What model is it and what's my problem with it? Let's flip the camera and find out. So any ideas then? Any ideas as to what Casio I'm talking about today? Well, the thumbnail certainly is a bit of a clue, I think. Quite a distinctive case profile. I know what you're thinking though, you've seen that before on this channel. What about the box? Any help there? Not really kind of standard generic Casio box. Why don't I get a drum roll going, fast forward the box opening and cut to the chase. And there it is, it's the Casio AE1300, the less popular and less attractive cousin of the Casio AE1200, aka the Casio Royale. On paper, these watches are so, so similar. It's the same case, the same pushes, it's the same resin band, it's the same case back, and they have a broadly similar set of specifications as well as identical dimensions. However, if you do a quick search on YouTube for the AE1200, you will find dozens and dozens of videos. People love the AE1200. If you do a similar search for the AE1300, you'll find a half a dozen videos at best. It seems that people just have not taken to this watch in anything like the same way as they've taken to the AE1200. Now, I wouldn't necessarily describe either of these watches as classically handsome or attractive. They are both rather acquired tastes as these entry-level Casios tend to be. And if you take the AE1300 in isolation, it is a fantastic watch. And if you are buying it in isolation, then it comes with my two thumbs up seal of approval because the specs that you get for the money are absolutely ridiculous. These are less than $20 on eBay, around $25 on Amazon. They're readily available. I'll leave links to both in the description of the video. And you get 100 meters of water resistance, 10 year battery life, fantastic backlight. You get a countdown timer, a stopwatch, world time and alarm on both watches. So, you know, you can buy either of these with confidence. But the feature set that specifically you get from the AE1300 is so damn niche that I think for most people, really, it'll come down to looks. If you're not turned on or off by one or the other, then I would recommend that you're probably better served by the AE1200, which is probably probably the reason why most people are all over this one and have completely ignored this one, much like I have. The AE1300's USP, its raison d'etre, its entire reason for existing is as a referee's watch. As I said, it really is quite niche. Look, if you're refereeing your son or your daughter's soccer game at the weekend, then this watch could be fantastic for you and very well priced. Or if you're a gym junkie and you do heaps of intervals, again, this one can help a lot with that. But I reckon that is just so niche. And all of the feature sets that it shares with the AE1200, I think are more usable on the AE1200. Plus, I'm just not a fan of those three constantly shifting little LCD circles at the top of the screen. I will circle back to them a bit later on. <clears throat> but for those of you who are interested, I'll go through dimensions and specifications first. 39.5 mil in diameter, 12.8 mil thick, 44 lug to lug. It wears very, very well indeed. 18 millimeter lug width. Now, that is gonna be a pain in the bum if you do want to swap out this resin band. There are actually companies now who make specific straps for the Casio Royale or the 1300, but that kind of flaring means if you put an 18 mil NATO on, it doesn't look any good. 40 grams as supplied, super, super light. 10 year battery as advertised, 
100 meters of water resistance, which is fantastic. Two great bright orange amber colored LEDs, one in each of the bottom two corners. After dark visibility with this one is not a problem at all. And the LCD digital display is actually quite legible. The time, the day of the week, the month, and the date of the month, all quite large, even if the numerals are a little bit thinner than on the Casio Royale. Let's go through the rest of the feature set though, and you can tell me whether these are actually gonna be useful to you or or not. One push and you have a stopwatch. Now, you're thinking stop, start, hang on, stop, start, what's going on? Right, this one, if you're timing a play or something, then you have this kind of split. It doesn't do laps as such, but it continuously keeps this bottom time running, whereas you can stop and start the top timer there. If you want to reset, you hold this button and you press reset. If you press this adjust mode to begin with though, you can time a half, so a 60 minute half of a sports game, or you can adjust that from anything up to, you know, 110, five, whatever you like. It will then activate an alarm when the time runs out. Like I said, if you are actually refereeing a sports game, this could come in useful to you. After the stopwatch, we have a countdown timer. Now this one, if you hold the adjust button here, you can adjust it up to a maximum of 45 minutes. I'm guessing that is a half of soccer, football, association football, whatever you wanna call it, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and so on for various other sports. Again, you can count down. You get a fairly prominent alarm when the timer counts down that lasts for about five seconds. Next up, next push of the mode button, you have intervals. Like I said, this one could be useful for gym junkies. Hold here, you can adjust not one, not two, but nine different intervals. So nine different intervals are available. You can have it counting 30 second reps, one minute reps, two minute reps, five minute reps, etc. So I can see that being useful for someone who does have a fairly regular gym routine. It does have one other interesting feature. If I cycle through here, there we are. Either one single countdown and then it stops or infinite repetitive countdown. So 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, one minute, one minute on. I can see that working for people in the gym, as I said. Next one, get out of that adjustment, go beyond that world time. It has the standard 48 world cities that you can adjust it to. You can cycle through them and see what time it is in Honolulu for your cousins who live over there back to a single alarm. So you only get a single alarm and then you're on to the regular time. So like I said, quite a unique, quite a niche feature set. The stopwatch is not just a stop start reset, no lap capability there, so not much use for runners who run laps, for example, but if you are refereeing a game of a certain half or a quarter or whatever, you can set that. Likewise, the interval training and the countdown timer also set up for sports people and referees, but probably not as easy to operate as they are if you just want the basic features of a countdown timer and a stopwatch. You'll find those on the AE1200. What about these three LCD circles at the top of the screen then? Well, this one is constantly counting up to 10 and then counting down down to 10 in alignment with that second hand. This one here counts up in blocks of 10 seconds. You'll see it add an extra LCD section at 20. And here we're counting up in 10 minutes. So we're at 5.10, that will all disappear at 5.11. I don't really know why it's there. I mean, it's so obvious to read the LCD numerals here. Why would you be trying to get an extra measurement from those ones up there? I'm not quite sure. As it is, it just makes the dial look a little busy. And that's it on wrist. I have a seven inch wrist for your reference. If you find the F91s, the A158s, the A168s, etc., just a bit too tiddly, this one definitely has a bit more visual presence on wrist. No weight though, 40 grams, super light, super comfortable for all day wear this one. That's the overhead shot. The numerals are nice and large, if a little thinner than on some other Casio models. I just find myself getting distracted by those little circles constantly shifting above the display. And that said outside, there's no reason why this watch is any less modifiable than the AE1200. You could remove most of those graphics, I'm sure, if you wanted to clean up that look a little bit. And I know there are companies now selling stainless steel and even bronze cases for these things. So there's a, a whole mod scene has popped up around this case shape. So undoubtedly as well made, as feature packed, and as ridiculous value for money as all of the other Casios that I have reviewed on the channel, but with such a niche feature set, I can see why this one lives in the shadows of the AE1200 and is likely to continue to do so. 
So there you have it, the Casio AE1300 is a genuinely fantastic watch and a ridiculous bargain if you can pick one up for less than 20 US dollars. If you're a referee, for example, or you're just a gym junkie who does lots of intervals, then maybe this is the watch that has been missing from your collection. If you're not a referee or a gym junkie who does lots of intervals, then maybe you should have a look at the AE1200 instead. I think it is just a little bit cooler with that, you know, pseudo James Bond tie in reference and I'm not all that fussed about those three flashing circles at the top of the screen of this one. I would pick the AE1200 every single time. Thanks for watching, I will see you in a future video.